First of all, I offer my Sastang Dandava to Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Parmarada Dhamma Guru Pada Padma, Anitilila Pravisht Om Vishnu Pada, Ashto Tarasata Sisima Drupa Nugachari Varya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Sula Prabhupada and his associates and to all the great personalities in our Sri, very glorious Sri Guru Parampara as Maharaj has glorified them so eloquently and with such devotion. My pranam to our Sri Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Param Pujapad. Sri Bhakti Vichar Vishnu Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Yati Maharaj, and my very senior Prabhu, Sri Kanta Prabhu, Amrita Nam, Sri Kanta Prabhu, and to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vancha Kanta Prabhu, Vancha Kanta Prabhu, Vancha Kanta Prabhu, Vancha Kanta Prabhu, Go in the Sundar Juk. So now it is our third day here in Berlin. And we are only discussing one subject. 
Only one subject. Why did we come to this path of bhakti? To be, why did we come to this uh, path of the devotional service? Huh? And not to, to quarrel with anyone or to criticize anyone. <coughs> we came only to attain transcendental love. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has summarized all of the Vedic literature in, in one line. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Krishna Sambandha. That means <coughs> we are related not with any physical things of this realm. Jivera Sorapoy Krishna Nitya Everyone's relationship is with Sri Krishna. Not with mother, father, society, nation. And you this. With so first teaching of Mahaprabhu, Krishna Sambandha, Bhakti Abhideya, and the, the method to attain the goal of life, not karma, jnana, yoga, any of these paths, only Shuddha Bhakti. So Bhakti Abhideya, and third point, Prayam Prayoja. Hmm? The, goal, <laughs> the goal of life, <laughs> excuse me, the Prayoja, the goal of life is only how to, the transcendental love of, as Maharaj was saying, not of Vaikuntha even, or of Dwarka or Mathura, but of Golok Prindava. Hmm? And among that, the Unnata Ujjwala Rasa, Pariki on behalf of Prajagopis, especially following Rupa Manji, the leader of all the maidservants of Srimati Radhika, highest call. So that I don't forget this fact, because I am very dull and Quite foolish. So my Gurudev gave me this name, Prem Prabhuja. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, never forget why you became a devotee. Only to attain love. So for three days we have been discussing uh, the meaning of love. And it will never end, actually. Because this love is an endless ocean. Para para sunya kabir bhakti rasa sindhu Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Rupa Goswami that the ocean of love, Bhakti Rasa, is so vast. Ordinary ocean, if you travel very far, after some time you'll reach the shore. But this ocean of love in every direction, anywhere you go, no shore. Para para sunyo gavir. And if you go down in the ocean, down, down, one day you get to the bottom. But in this ocean, it does not matter how deep you will go, you cannot find the bottom. Hmm? So, we are hearing how Sri Krishna, Sri Radhaya Pranayama Himaki Dishovamadiya, he wanted to know how deep is the love of Shivati Radhika. Hmm? To see it, the manifestation of the love within a heart. And during the Rasa Lila, Sri Krishna disappeared. And from a hidden place he was watching. But now what will she do? In many pastimes of Krishna, Krishna is trying to understand how deep is the love of Radhika. <coughs> but he, he cannot. Radhika Prema Guru Amishanat Amas Saranana Nitya Natya Udbhat. Krishna himself admits that the Prem of Radhika is my guru. And it's the love of Radhika that makes me perform newer and newer dances. Radhika's love is my mm, dance teacher. Mm. So in Krishna Lila, Krishna was trying to find out where is the bottom of this love of Radhika. Mm. Just like a man in a boat was crossing a river. And he was thinking, how deep is the river here? So he took his stick and he leaned over the boat and he was... But he could not touch the bottom. So he leaned a bit further and then still could, maybe I'm almost there. And he slipped and he fell. <laughs> so, see, Krishna is like that. He was thinking, how deep is this love of Radhika? He was trying to find the end of it. And he lost his balance and he fell in that brain and became, God! <laughs> so you can see, here, Never forget this. Never forget this. Krishna is here. 
What is he doing? His whole life. How to understand, how to relish the love of Radhika and understand how deep is her love. And being absorbed in that, he became so Gauranga, his dears. Krishna himself, in his Leela of tasting the Radha Bhav. In this way, Krishna in Gora Leela fulfilled his three desires. Incidentally, three desires of yesterday we were discussing how three desires of Sakis were fulfilled also. And it was revealed, touched upon in Srimad Bhagavatam, hmm? in the Rasalila. <laughs> After Krishna had disappeared, all gopis became quite mad in separation, searching here and there, talking to Tulsi, talking to the trees, talking to the flowers. They became so absorbed in remembering Krishna, they began to enact his pastimes. Even some of the gopis actually became Shamkala, they be the same color as Krishna. And Krishna was watching, he could not believe. And finally, when they could not find him, they gathered together on the bank of Jimuna and all together. Taramadde Sava Shastra Nama Sankirtan, Niraparad Nandale Pai Premadan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, out of all the practices of bhakti, what is the best? Hari Nam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Satya Sadhana Tattva Jaiti Kichu Sakal, Hare Nama Sankirtane Vilibe Sakal. All the truth of sadhana for the ordinary devotee practicing in this world and all the truths of sadhya, the highest goal of praying for everyone on every level, all the truths are completely contained together there in Harinam Sankirtan. If one will chant the holy name, Niraprad, without any offense, then surely praying will be awakened in the heart. Krishna Prema Gama Prema Rita Ashwadhan Krishna Prapti Seva Rita Samudre Majan Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said by chanting the holy names without offense then the ecstatic love awakens in the heart and one can taste the nectar of that love and by the power of that the fragrance of that love attracts one black bumblebee <laughs> And Krishna, he is very eager to taste the nectar of praying, and Krishna will come to that devotee. So one attains directly Krishna's service. Sevam Rita Samudre Majjan. And the holy name immerses one in the endless ocean of the nectar of Seva. Nikunja Seva to Sisiva and Krishna. So, for us in this world, and also for all the great personalities, the sources of Krishna in the spiritual world. Singing together the glories of Krishna is the highest the devotion. So all were singing. Jayati Teyadikam Janmana Praja Sraita Indriya Shashadasri. And Krishna was watching. And finally, when Radhika, she prayed to Krishna, Baba Dayushan, I cannot live for another moment without you. Then Krishna reappeared. Braj gopis put down there, some of the younger gopis, they put down their cloth, their anchal on the ground and make, made us and Vushi Krishna to sit down. And there we were discussing yesterday. Sabaje twa tananga deepanam sahasiri lakshana vibrama bruva. Braj gopis surrounded Krishna. Some were massaging his hands, some his legs, his feet, his shoulders, and they were glorifying him. Oh, Sati, Shama Sundar is so soft. His legs are so soft. His hands are so soft. And they were smiling and moving their eyebrows and glancing at him and glorifying him. They were being so nice to him. Krishna realized, oh, oh I'm in trouble. Oh. <laughs> because praying is like that. Aheri Bhagati Premna. So when the love is flowing, then Radha and Krishna, they joke and criticize each other. But if there's a glorification, then Krishna knows that he's in trouble. They must be angry with him. So Shukadev Goswami says, Samstuta ishat kupita baba shire. Gopis were glorifying Krishna. That means ishat kupita. They were actually a little bit angry with him. Hmm? Shukadev Goswami is directly telling this. But they are hiding their mood by their smiles. So Gopis are thinking, Oh, Krishna, 
We thought that you are a coward boy. You are expert at taking the cows into the forest. But we did not know that you are a pandit. But today we discovered that you are a pandit. Because see, Krishna had told them, you should follow Dharma, go and serve your husband. <laughs> when they first came to the residence. So they said, Krishna, we have a question for you. Can you answer it? Bajato nu bajante eka. Eka eta dviparyayam. No bayangscha bajante eka. Eta no bruisadubo. Gopi said, Krishna, tell us about love. There are three types of people, three types of lovers. One, Bajato nu bajante eka. One type of lover, he reciprocates. How much he's loved, then he loves so much back. Right? Another type gives love always, whether the other person is loving him or not. And the third type, whether a person is loving him or not, he never loves them back. Three types here. So he said to Krishna, Eta no Bruisadubo, tell us, uh, explain these three types of lovers. Why? Why are they doing this? Because they wanted to admit Krishna to admit to them that he'd done wrong. Why did he disappear in the middle of the night? Why did he abandon them and put them into so much pain? It was wrong. Their intention is that Krishna will say, the first type of love is not has no love at all. Why? He's only a businessman. How much love you give, he gives that back. Not more, not less. So that is not love at all. That is only business. The second type, uh, Krishna, he said, the second type is a person who loves without any conditions, like a mother. If the child behaves well or doesn't behave well, but the child is giving love. So Krishna said, I am not in that category. Why? Because you gopis, you always love me. Uh, you never go against me, so I never have any chance to show that I love you if you don't love me, because you always love me. But my dear gopis, that category of unconditional love, you are the example. You are that middle category. He said to go be Sumadhya Maha. So Sumadhya Maha has double meaning. One meaning is the Madhya, the middle. The middle of your body is very thin. And you are very beautiful. And Sumadhya Maha means, oh gopis, you are in that middle category. When gopis heard this, they were not impressed. They said, Krishna, just don't try to flatter us. Just answer our question. Don't flatter us. We just give us a straight answer and don't avoid the question. Because they want Krishna to answer the third question. They want Krishna to admit that he is in the last category. In the last category. This last category has four parts. First, Atmaram. Self-satisfied person, like Shukadev Goswami in his first career, when he was absorbed in Brahman, he never saw anything. In this world, he was just self-satisfied, not dependent on anything. Second category, Aptakam. Person who, they enjoy something and their desire is fulfilled, so they leave it. They have no more desires now because they've already enjoyed it. Gopis were thinking, look, Krishna, he called us for Rasalila, he enjoyed us and then he left us. So perhaps he's Aptakam. Then the next category is Akritagya, ungrateful. We, we abandoned all things, we left everything to serve Krishna, but Krishna abandoned us. Is he ungrateful? And then the last category is Guru Drohi. Guru Drohi means someone is serving you, someone is helping you, but still you go against them. With a cause sometimes, but especially without a cause, it's very bad. So gopis are thinking that we always serve Krishna, we always love Krishna, but he went against us. So he is in this category, very bad category, Guru Drohi. And Krishna should admit this fact. So gopis, they formulated this question, it was like a trap, a test for Krishna, because though they have eagerness, they want to dance with him, Tadananga Deepanam means as they were massaging him and speaking with him, then the Ananga Deep, the mm, mm, 
desire to serve Krishna in Nikunjalila was growing and growing, but they would not do it. Because first Krishna should say, sorry, for abandoning them. Hmm? So, Krishna, how can he get out from this trap? What can he do? Hmm? Krishna was thinking, oh, now I am in trouble. Because Braj I am in the court of the Prajigal peace. And, Braj and the, the court, if it is the Supreme Court, <laughs> Supreme Court, when they pass hmm, a verdict, then you cannot appeal. Yeah? If you have a court and they pass, you can appeal and go to the higher court. If you don't like it, you can appeal. But when you go to the Supreme Court, then if they pass a judgment, no appeal. So, hearing this question, <laughs> Krishna was trembling. <laughs> he thought, now I am about to be convicted in the Supreme Court <laughs> of Brajagopis. You cannot appeal anything higher because their brain is the highest. <laughs> and they think that I am a Guru Drogi, that I am guilty of being a Guru Drogi. But I am innocent, Krishna. He thought, so... He was very emotional and Krishna was trembling and at once he gave his reply. He said, Actually, I am not against you. I am your friend. Only I disappeared to increase your loving propensities. That's why, I, just like a poor person, if a poor person finds some wealth and then they lose it, then oh, they're thinking about that continuously day and night, they cannot remember anything else. Hmm? So, here it's very interesting, the first word of this verse, hmm? in the whole... Ba Bhagavatam. In whole Srimad Bhagavatam, there are only two places where Sri Krishna begins a verse with Naham, not me. Not I. Naham. Only two verses. So you can compare them. The first one is when the friends of Krishna told Madhya Shoda, Oh, Maya, Kanaya has been eating dirt. Go and see. Madhya Shoda came with a stick. Hmm? Have you been eating dirt? Krishna was afraid. Naham bakshitavam ambe. Oh mother, I have not eaten dirt. Naham. Hmm? You see, in Sanskrit, hmm? when you make a, say a verse, then the first word has extreme emphasis. Hmm? Just like when Krishna told Udav to go to Braja, he held his hand. What did he say? Go, go, go. You must go to Braja. So, very strong emphasis. Krishna was afraid of Madhya Shoda. And being afraid, he said, Naham Bhakshitabam Ambe. So now, Krishna is in the Supreme Court of Rajagopis. They're about to, the hammer will fall, Lalita Saki's hammer, to give the judgment. <laughs> and he will be found guilty, he will have no appeal. So now, Krishna has to speak three verses in his defense. So Krishna is panicking. Naham! Naham to Sakyo Padetopi Janto. No, no, I am not against you. Please. Listen to my defense, Your Honor. <laughs> it is just like when a poor person loses his wealth. You know, once there was a very poor man. He went into the forest with his friends. They were very poor. And they were digging. And he was digging with his spade and hit a pot. He thought, what is this? And he moved the sand and he pulled out the pot. And he looked inside and it was full of gold coins. They'd been there for a very long time. All the dirt was stuck over the gold coins. And see this, ha, ha, he became hysterical. He began to laugh and he was crying. As his friends were looking at him. What happened to him? Huh? Maybe boot grasta. Maybe a boot. A ghost has come and possessed him. And he got up and he ran away. His friends thought, what happened? But he was very happy. He was running to the river because he thought all these co coins are dirty. I washed them. So he was running to the river and on the way he was thinking, my wife always criticizes me. She says, you never buy me any earrings. You never buy me any necklace or anything. 
<laughs> now I have so much gold I can buy so many <laughs> ornaments for my wife. My wife will be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. My children and grandchildren, everyone will be satisfied. So he came on the bank of the river. He thought, so first I'll wash them and then I'll count them. So he took them out one by one. He was washing them in the river and putting them down. Like this. And then when they were all clean, after he washed them, then he thought, now I'll count them. So, where I live in Brindavan, the sandy bank of the Jumuna, where the Jumuna is flowing, past the Keshi Ghat, comes to Madam, and then it turns. And the bank is quite high from the water. And what happens? Every, every few days, every now and then, a portion of the bank, just the sandy bank, breaks up and falls in the river. So he was there. One, two, just then, that portion of the bank <laughs> fell in the river. All his coins, everything were washed away. He was lucky to save his life. He swam back and he got out and, and he went home. All the way home he was crying, Alas, alas. <laughs> he was saying, Paisa koi, paisa koi. Oh, my paisa, my money, my money, my money. His wife said, what happened, what happened? And he explained the, the story. <laughs> and then his wife was amazed. She was shaking her head. He was saying, Paisakoi, Paisakoi, his wife was saying. Doi kyo, doi kyo. Why did you wash? Why did you wash? Why did you wash? If she had just bought them home, they would have. Why did you go to wash? And the two of them whole day and night for weeks and weeks they cried. Where's my money? Why did you wash? Where's my money? Why did you wash? <laughs> so Krishna said to Brother Gopis, no, no, no. Don't convict me in this court. I am not against you. Only I disappeared because I am your treasure. You love me. And if I will disappear, then you will think of me more and more and more. Hmm? So then, Braj Gopis, they were not happy with this reply. <laughs> Why? Because prema swara sikasya kasya chitayam vikritati prakriya. The love of Braja Gopis is such that it's always increasing by itself. Huh? Does not matter Krishna is good or bad, whatever he does or does not do. Hmm? It doesn't matter. And Jaitan Mabu expressed it. What did he say? Asvishava padaratam vinashtuman adarshanam mamahatam karotu vat yatatata va vedadhatu lampato mat prananata stus Doesn't matter what Krishna does. Huh? Asvishava padaratam. Radhika says, You can embrace me, leaving all the other gopis. You can leave all the other gopis and just embrace me and make me feel I am the most fortunate woman in the whole universe. Or you can break my heart by never being present, but by disappearing from me. You can do. Uh, this is, this is uh, like psychological torture is worse than physical torture. You know, just like if a mother has a child and the mother is chastising the child and the child says, I am not going to eat today. Then the mother feels pain. Child did not hit the mother or do anything. Huh? Only refusing. Huh? And the mother feels pain. So Prajapati Radhika is telling uh, to Krishna that uh, if you want, you can give psychological pain to me. You chose, you wanted to try to increase our love, so you chose to disappear. And this gave us so much psychological pain. But because it's the method that you have chosen, I accept it. Why? You are Whatever you want to do, you can do. We never judge you. But, you are my prana. I cannot live without you at all. 
So Krishna never realized, in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he realized it, this brain. And so he spoke this verse in the end of Shikshastaka. So, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he has, he has said, Viburapi Kalayan Sada Bivridhin, Guru Api Gaurava, Charyaya Bihina, Mua Upachita Vakrim Api Shuddho, Jayati Mura Dvishi Radhika Anuraga. All glories to the love of Radhika. It is the um, abode, it is the shelter of the Virod, the contradictory characteristics. Even though the love of Radhika is Vibhu, it is all-pervading. Radhika's brain is everywhere, all-pervading. There's no space for it to expand. Sadaabhi Vridhin, but still it's expanding. Guru Api Gaurava, Charya Abhina, even though Radhika's love is the greatest, but it has no pride. She feels, Na Prema Gandosti Durapa Bayaro, I have no love at all. Hmm? And even though a person whose heart is contaminated is very crooked, but a pure-hearted person is straightforward. But Radhika's heart is completely pure, and she's crooked also. It's a very great contradiction. Huh? Right? So, Jayati Muradrishi Radhika Radhika. Oh, glories to the Prem of Srimati Radhika. So how can Krishna, by hiding, how can he increase their love? Their love is increasing by itself. Whatever he does. So Krishna realized that he made a mistake. Krishna was explaining to Braj Gopis that, you see, when two people have love for each other, they always try to do things that the love will increase. You know? So sometimes someone will buy some flowers or some chocolates and give. someone will uh, give a gift or arrange a holiday you know, like this. Sometimes those who have love for each other, they play tricks on each other, jokes on each other. And they may become worried, but afterwards they laugh. So Krishna was thinking like that. He thought, let me increase Braj Gopi's love. I'll just hide for a minute and, and see what happens. Then I'll jump out and we'll all laugh and it will be very nice, very nice atmosphere. But what happened? When Krishna disappeared, then the brain, the vira agni, the fire of separation, expanded in Brajagopi so quickly and so intensely, Krishna didn't know what to do. And he was just watching, watching, what is this? He didn't expect Brajagopis will start talking to the flowers, talking to the trees. He did not expect Brajagopis will start imitating his pastimes. He did not expect the Brajagopis would become black, Shamsundar, and Krishna's color being absorbed in him. He, what is this? Hmm? He never realized. So he was thinking, I was trying to reciprocate with you, but I realized I cannot. In other words, in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna made a promise. He said, na, he said, Yeyata mam prapadyante tangs tataiva bhajamyaham. I reciprocate with everyone. So Sri Krishna was trying to reciprocate with Brad Gopi's love by this joke. I will hide and appear again. Huh? But, it became a very big drama. He did not expect what would be the result. And so now he realized, Oh, Prince Gopis, Na pareham niravadju samyajam Swasadu krityam vipudayo shapiba Yama bhajan durjaya geya sankala Samvrisha tadva pratiyatu sadhana Actually, I cannot reciprocate with you. Na pareham! He tried. But he discovered it was not possible. One example is given. Once upon a time, there was a very huge and powerful wrestler. And he, he was meeting in the one stage and thousands of people came to see him. And he was saying, Who can challenge me? Is there anyone who can challenge me? But no one could challenge him. So at that time, there was one man in the audience and very humbly he came up onto the stage. He said, you are a great personality. You are so powerful, everyone is afraid of you. When I was younger, I also used to do some wrestling. So I admire you very much. So can I take, have my photograph taken with you? He said, yes, of course, where, where is your photographer? 
He said, oh, my photographer is just there. Hmm? Can we shake hands? And he said, yes. So they, like this, and the photographer, he took the, his camera, and they looked at the camera like this. And so then that man, very humble man, he squeezed. <laughs> and he was so strong that wrestler realized, I, he's so strong, like a thousand elephants. I cannot fight him. And he went, oh, now parry him. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot fight with you. Like this. So see, Krishna was like that. He played his flute and called all Braja Gopis to this Rasalila. And Krishna has some abhiman. Yeyatamam prapadyante. All devotees come to me. I will reciprocate with you. Braj Gopis came to Krishna in a very humble mood. Huh? But just by the touch of the hand of Shimati Radhika. Ah, such brain! Naparayam Nirvajasamjaja. I cannot reciprocate with you. Nirvatya hmm? Samyuja means your devotion to me is the Nindarahita. It cannot be criticized in any way. It is so perfect. Swasadu Kritya. Here, Swasadu Kritya is one, it is in the Ekavachanam, singular case in Sanskrit. It means that Krishna is saying, what to speak of all the services that you do for me? Even one service that you have done for me, I cannot reciprocate. Swasadu Krityam Vibhudai Ushapiva. Even if I served you for the lifetime of the demigods, like Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma lives for 311 trillion years. And Sri Krishna is saying, Oh Radhika, if I serve you for 311 trillion years, I could not reciprocate with only one service that you have done for me. Very beautiful romantic words Sri Krishna is speaking. Why? Because while Krishna is serving her, Radhika's love is increasing. So, this is called the Chakravidi Vyaj. Chakravidi Vyaj. That is a compound interest. You know, if you take a loan, and there's interest. So the interest is piling up. So, what to speak of Krishna repaying the, the love of Radhika. Krishna cannot even keep up with the interest payments. So now he will always be Rini. He will always be in debt to Radhika and Brajagopis. So he said that Samvrsha Tadva Pratiyatu Sadhuna Sadhuna, only by your qualities of being a sadhu, only by your generosity, only by your open-heartedness can I become free from this debt. So when Krishna realized that he could not um, reciprocate with the Prem of Radhika, he fell down at her feet and Krishna was crying for forgiveness. Give me mercy in this court. And when Radhika saw Krishna crying, she picked up Krishna and held his head to her breast. Oh, there, 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 don't cry, Krishna. <laughs> don't, be, don't be so pitiful. Hmm? And, and Radhika looked at her sakis said, What did we do to him? We've been very cruel. <laughs> We've been to, we shouldn't have done this. Oh, Lalita, why did we sit him and put him in our court? We should not have done this. He's not against us. Hmm? Really, he loves us. Hmm? So Radhika was holding the head of Krishna on her breast and saying, Oh, Shamsunda. We know that you love us. We have been too harsh with you. Why? Radhika said to Lalita, We have done Gatasapa Pariksha. It was too extreme. You know Gatasapa Pariksha? Gatasapa Pariksha means that if there's a king and his men capture one thief and they put him in the court, he's on trial. They know that he's stolen some treasures, but they cannot find any evidence. There's no evidence. He has alibis, he has excuses, he has witnesses, and they cannot convict him, but they know that he's guilty. So then the king thinks, what can we do? We can't just let him go. We can't let him go. So then the king says, all right, we will do Gatasapa Pariksha. It means the test of the pot and the snake. That means the soldiers of the king, they bring a clay pot with a poisonous snake inside. So all you have to do to prove that you are innocent, put your hand inside the pot. <laughs> if the snake doesn't bite you, then you are innocent. And if the snake bites you, that's not our fault. It is the will of God. <laughs> so we are, not, we are not going to convict you. We don't have evidence. But it is, it's the will of God. 
bring the pot. Gata sa apa purisha. So Radharani was feeling by asking this question to see Krishna. Krishna sit down. <laughs> I'm telling. Bajata ulu bajanteika. This was for Krishna, the Gata Salva Priksha. We asked in such a way that he must be guilty. <laughs> it will be it was very dangerous. And now Krishna is crying and Radharani was also crying. So then Radhika she wiped away the tears of Krishna. And said, Oh my Shama Sandra, don't cry. And Krishna, after some time, he calmed down. And then Radhika said, I am feeling a great eagerness to dance with you in the rest. So Krishna said, Achyopiyari, my belovedness. And together, holding hands, Radha and Krishna got up and they went to the Rasa Mandal. And then the, actual, the Rasa Lila really began. After Krishna had shown uh, the purity of his love. So, but from these questions, we can understand that gopis have, the sakis of Radhika have some doubt about Krishna. Is Krishna Atmaram self-satisfied? He has a little Atmaramata. That's why he is the Vishai of Rasa and Radhika is the Ashray. You see? Radhika is the Ashray of love for Krishna and Krishna is Vishai. Krishna is the Ashray of love for Radhika also. But still we say Krishna is Vishai Vigraha. Why? He has a little atmaram, enjoying huh? that he said himself satisfied. Hmm? So this fault, gopis had a suspicion that this fault is in Krishna. Then that Krishna is akritagya, ungrateful. Hmm? Krishna even left Vrindavan and went to Mathura and Dwarka. And when they met in Kurukshetra, Krishna said to Braja gopis, Apyavadayata asman swit, akritagya vishankaya. Oh Braja gopis, are you upset with me because you suspect that I am ungrateful to you? So that was, that idea was that Krishna is a little bit ungrateful. And last thing, Guru Drohi, that he will go against those who even love him. So when Krishna appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then these three faults <coughs> in Krishna were cleansed away in Gauralila. And then this way, these three desires that Krishna will become a perfect prani, a perfect prani, were fulfilled by, you see, Krishna is Lila Purushottam. Lord Ram is Mariana Purushottam, the Supreme Lord of Mariana, ethics and morality. Krishna is Lila Purushottam. But when Krishna appeared as Prema Purushottam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then the desire of the Sakis that Krishna will become perfect prani, perfect lover, they were fulfilled. Huh? Why? Because Krishna in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu what to speak of being Guru Drohi being against the person who loves you or with no cause now he realized how to love someone who is against you even with a cause and that was expressed by Mahaprabhu Aslisyava padaratam penashpuna adarshanam mamahatam karotuva you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself explained this verse. He said, once upon a time, so just two minutes, my Pujari ji, my pranam, and Muji Shalaki ji, please forgive me. Just to one last point, because it's very important. How Krishna became free from the fault of Guru Drohi in Goralila and fulfilled the last desire of Radhika Sakis, who kept him in that courtroom. Hmm? Huh? Mahaprabhu told a story. He said once, there was a poor Brahmin, huh? Kost Brahmin, he had leprosy. And his wife was a great um, Patibrata, a very chaste woman. And he could not walk because of his leprosy. So his wife carried him to the river and was bathing him in the river. While he was bathing, just at some distance, one prostitute came who was extremely beautiful and she was bathing. And that Brahmin looked and he saw her. Afterwards, when he came out from the water, his wife saw that he had a very long face. And he was very sad. His wife said, My dear husband, why are you feeling sad? She said, nothing, nothing. She said, no, I can tell. 
I know there's some sadness in your heart. Tell me, open your heart, open and tell me what it is. So then he was ashamed, he said, I saw that prostitute, she was so beautiful. And the desire came in my heart. I want to enjoy with her. So then she thought, my husband is old. He has leprosy. He can die soon. If you die with desire in his heart, then you have to take birth again. He may go to hell even. So this desire should go. So then she took him home. She said, you wait. And then she went to visit that prostitute. And she came, she said, uh, can you meet with my husband? Usually the prostitutes don't get such a request. <laughs> so she was surprised. But oh yes, okay. If you insist. She said, but there's one problem. You know, will you accept to meet with him even though he has leprosy? <laughs> then the prostitute said, um, okay, but there's two conditions. Two conditions. First of all, you should bring him in the middle of the night so no one will see. Because if anyone sees that I have one client who has leprosy, it will be very bad for my business. <laughs> hmm? Business will go down. <laughs> and the second condition is that you have to pay double price because this is a special, special circumstance. You have to pay double the price. Then that chaste wife, Pati Brata, very chaste wife, she said, we are very poor, we cannot afford double the price. So, can I become your maidservant? And I will serve you, and you don't give me any wages, you just keep the money on one side, and when it equals the double amount price, then you can keep it, and then I will go. So then that prostitute said, all right, we agree to this proposal. So then she went away. In the middle of the night, she was carrying her husband on her shoulder through the forest in the dark. <laughs> so there was one Rishi meditating in the forest. And in the dark, she didn't see him. And she was carrying the husband and the husband's legs were hanging. And it hit the Rishi. And the Rishi came out of his trance and saw this foot with leprosy. Oh, what is this? Who has hit me? I curse you that when the sun rises in the morning, you'll die. So then that chaste lady, she said to the Rishi, please forgive me, it was not deliberate, it was accident, I didn't see you there in the dark. And seeing that she was very, mm, very pious, the Rishi said, but I cannot uh, revoke my curse. Huh? So then, she said, then the sun will not rise. <laughs> so after, after a few hours, it was time for the sun to rise and the night was going on. 10 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, 40, there was no daytime. Everyone was afraid. They were praying to the demigods. What happened? Why is the sun not rising? And from the prayers of all the people, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, three devotees, they appeared before that chaste lady. And they said to her, we are very pleased with your Patibrata, your chastity to your husband. So just you revoke your vow. You took a vow that the sun will not rise. You take it back. And we promise your husband will die, but we'll bring him back to life. So then, that chaste lady, she said, let the sun rise. And there and then, the sun. The sky became full of light and the sun began to rise in the sky. And her husband died. And then Brahma, Vishnu and uh, Mahesh, they took water and they sprinkled it on her husband. And when the... Water touched him, he opened his eyes. His leprosy was gone, the disease of his body was gone, and his ridrog, the disease of the heart, lust, huh, was also gone with a pure mind. He told, I, I don't want to go to that person, no problem. <laughs> Let's go home. We can go. His heart was pure. So, very beautiful story. But what is the teaching in this story? The teaching in this story is not. The, the object of love, what he does is right or wrong. That is, is not about this. It is about only Seva. 
just to serve. So Radhika's mood is like this. Whatever Krishna does, if he wants to give me psychological pain by choosing that method of disappearing, he can do as he likes. If he wants to meet with another gopi even, I'll go to her house and I'll serve her if she refuses to meet with him. Even. So in this way, Radhika's love is completely pure. What to speak of Guru Drohi without a cause, even with a cause, she cannot go against the person whom she loves. But Krishna was not like that. Now in Gauralila, he realized his prema purushottam, he's become perfect premi, and so this bhava of Radhika came from the lotus lips of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he gave it to us as the Shikshastaka. Sri Sachinandan Gohari Ki Jai Vrindavan Bihari Lahal Ki Jai Bhare Sanivali Ki Jai Jai Sri Rale Ahoy to ki apratiyata yatma samprasidati Love has no conditions and no interruptions. This is praying. My pronouns to the Holy Spirit.